New Virginia head coach Tony Elliott inherits one of the best quarterbacks in the country. The question now is what will he do with him? So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, guys, as we predict Virginia's schedule and record for this upcoming college football season. And guys, this is a Virginia team that is quietly flying under the radar. I don't think people are paying enough attention to the Cavaliers, and they could be in store for a sneaky good season. You take a look at the numbers, guys, brought to you by College Football Encyclopedia. The Cavaliers only returned 53% of the production from last year. That's 108th in the country. The Cavaliers went 6-6 six and six last year. Not a bad mark. Their bowl game, unfortunately, got canceled. But it is unfortunate for them when you look at the fact they started 6-2 and two and finished 6-6. Six and six. They lost their final four games. Don't expect that losing streak to continue in the 2022. The Cavaliers were third in the country in offense last year, led by Brennan Armstrong, their quarterback, who by himself was averaging 436.1 yards per game, the most by any player since 2009. The Cavaliers have a loaded wide receiver core. They have the second-ranked passing offense in the country, a number that should stay about the same in 2022. The defense is what has to change. Great offensive mind and Tony Elliott as their new coach, but the defense has to improve after ranking 121st in the country last year and 123rd against the run. If the Cavaliers can fix that, they could be in for a very special year. So you take a look at their schedule, guys. They open the year against Richmond, chalk it up as a victory. They then go on the road to take on Illinois. Illinois and the Fighting Illini showed improvement under Brett Bielema last year, and this will not be an easy game by any means. But last year, Illinois' offense ranked 112th in the nation. And I simply don't believe that Illinois can keep up with the Cavaliers' high-octane offense. Yes, the defense might be able to get a few stops here and there, but as long as Brennan Armstrong stays healthy, and that will be the theme over the course of the entire year, if they can stay healthy, they'll be just fine. And they will defeat Illinois on the road. They then take down Old Dominion, we believe. So just like that, Virginia is 3-0 under new head coach Tony Elliott, who again came over from offensive coordinator at Clemson. They have their first ACC game on the road at Syracuse. This is an intriguing game, guys. One of the best passing attacks in the country in Virginia. One of the best rushing attacks in the country in Syracuse, as they have a dual threat quarterback in Garrett Schrader and one of the better running backs in the ACC in Sean Tucker. Here's the kicker, though. Syracuse was averaging over 216 rushing yards per game. Virginia was giving up well over 200 rushing yards per game. Which one's going to give here? Which one's going to give? I expect this to be a relatively high-scoring game, but in the end, we're going to give the edge to Syracuse. I don't have faith in Virginia's defense being fixed that soon. Syracuse owns home field advantage here. We're going to give the edge to the Orange, and Virginia will drop to 3-1. and one. We do believe they take down Duke. They beat Duke 48 to nothing last year, and that's really all you need to know about that. Duke had the worst defense in the country last year, so shouldn't be much of a change here. And then they go back home to take on Louisville, a team that Virginia beat by one last year, 34-33. to So we should be in store for another close matchup. Both teams have great quarterbacks, Brennan Armstrong, Malik Cunningham for Louisville. Really, it comes down to defense. You know, and, and these games that could be high-scoring shootouts and just trading shot for shot, which defense is going to come through and force a turnover? Which defense is going to come up and get a stop? And right now, I have more faith in Louisville's defense than I do Virginia's defense. I think Scott Satterfield made a lot of big changes through the transfer portal. He addressed those defensive issues. The offense should be about the same, if not better. And I think Louisville, despite having to play this game on the road, does have enough to come on and take down Virginia solely behind the relative strength of their defense. And by strength, we mean just being better than the Cavaliers in that area. So the Cavaliers dropped that game, and they are 4-2 heading in to their bye week. They come out of the bye week and take on Georgia Tech. They beat Georgia Tech only by eight last year, 48-40. to That was one of those weird games where the Yellow Jackets decided to show up. Uh, but don't expect much from them this year. The Cavaliers should win this game in Atlanta, and they should win it in more of a dominating fashion, especially with the week of rest and how bad Georgia Tech is going to be in 2022. They come back home to take on Miami. Big, big game here, guys. And look, you look at the numbers, guys. Virginia has hung with Miami for multiple years. You know, In the past, you would never have dreamed, dreamed of that. But now they are. And last year, Miami actually lost to Virginia, 30-28 to at Hard Rock in Miami. Virginia beat Miami on the road. Now they get to host the Hurricanes in another great quarterback matchup between Tyler Van Dyke of Miami and Brennan Armstrong of Virginia. 
And here's my argument, guys. Well, yes, Miami is going to be good. While Tyler Van Dyke and the offense are going to be fantastic. While the defense should improve under Mario Cristobal. If Virginia could win last year on the road, they can win at home now. And I genuinely believe that. So we are going to pull off the upset here for Virginia. We're going to give the Cavaliers the edge over the Hurricanes. You know, when you look at recruiting, when you look at it on, on paper, it shouldn't be happening. But it is. Brennan Armstrong will light up this Miami secondary. He will light up this Miami defense. And the Cavaliers will get a huge, huge win at home over the Hurricanes. And don't freak out and say it's not possible because it is. We just saw it last year. After the win against Miami, guys, the month of November gets very difficult for the Cavaliers despite three of their final four games being at home. And that's kind of the interesting thing here is the fact that three of the last four are at home, but it gets more difficult than really any stretch that the Cavaliers have seen prior to that. They kick things off with the home game against North Carolina, a team they lost to by 20 last year, 59-39. to 39. And I will honestly say, guys, that yes, even though North Carolina lost Sam Howell, I don't see a 20-point swing coming from 2021 to 2022. The Tar Heels should be improving drastically on defense. Gene Chizik coming in as defensive coordinator and should have a much better secondary than they did. That secondary obviously is the key for any team that plays Virginia. North Carolina secondary improves. The offense stays about the same. And because of that, again, I don't see a 20-point swing. UNC comes on the road and beats the Cavaliers. After the UNC game, Virginia takes on Pittsburgh in a game that could have major coastal implications because at this point, guys, Virginia only has three losses. Only has three losses. Yes, they're all in conference play, but the coastal's still wide open. How Pittsburgh fares, how Miami fares, no one knows. The team could get into that championship with three losses. The Pittsburgh game last year had major division implications, and Pittsburgh won that game 48-38 to in a great battle between Brennan Armstrong and Kenny Pickett. Now it's Keaton Slovis and Brennan Armstrong. Pittsburgh, though, guys, their secondary is way too good. Their secondary, to me, is extremely underrated. Last year, it was horrible. Last year, they were 115th in the nation. I think, just like North Carolina, they improve on that side of the ball. They improve in that area. And Pittsburgh, ultimately, does own the edge on the line of scrimmage. Their offensive line is phenomenal. Their defensive line is phenomenal. And when you look at it from a defensive edge, Pittsburgh owns that edge, and they have the offense to keep up with the Cavaliers. So even though they get to host, Virginia will fall. Pittsburgh wins this game. Cavaliers have now dropped two in a row. We do believe they take down Coastal Carolina, though. Again, all these quarterback matches are going to be so much fun. Grayson McCall for the Chanticleers and Brennan Armstrong for the Cavaliers. But Coastal lost a lot of production from last year. Uh, and last year was a disappointing year considering the success they had had in 2020. So I'm going to give the edge to Virginia here. This should be another high-scoring game and one they cannot afford to look over, but one that I do believe Virginia ultimately wins. And then they will close out the year, of course, against Virginia Tech, the annual big-time rivalry game where Virginia simply just has had no success. Virginia has defeated Virginia Tech just one time since 2004. They lost last year 29-24 to with a Virginia team that, me personally, I thought they were better than Virginia Tech, and they still found a way to lose at home. Now they have to go to Blacksburg. Virginia Tech has a pretty solid defense. That's going to be the strength under first-year head coach Brent Pry. So on top of it being a rivalry game, you've got the two new head coaches going at it, Tony Elliott and Brent Pry. But Virginia Tech, like Pittsburgh that we just mentioned, has the better defense. And I think ultimately that's going to be the kicker here. Virginia Tech, with home field advantage and the better defense, will find a way to shut down Brennan Armstrong. And the Hokies will win this game, a game that could be more crucial for them than Virginia, to, uh, Virginia in the sense of the Hokies might be fighting for their bowl berth. Virginia has already clinched it. But the Cavaliers once again fall to their in-state rival. They'll get over the hump eventually. But they finish the year at 7-5. and five. And for a first-year head coach in Tony Elliott, that's a major success. That's improvement from last year when they went 6-6. Six and six. The offense will still remain a major threat. They have a chance at an 8-win season if they can win their bowl game, and hopefully it doesn't get canceled this year. But the Cavaliers, guys, are the real deal. They're a threat to every single team they play on their schedule, and that passing attack will be one of the best in the country. And you do not need to be sleeping on the Cavaliers out of the ACC. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. Check out everything down in the description below as well, including those expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Sign up for those today. Become a part of our GE Nation. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.